this episode, we talked to local actor Wayne Johnson about his pumps. <laughs> and we talk about the post-apocalyptic Romeo and Juliet movie he was in that was filmed right here in Casanova. And he's running out of oxygen. Yes. <laughs> everybody, this is Ben Riley at Life of Riley Distilling in Casanova, and we are on episode 11 of A Week in the Life. As always, I'm here with... Jason Emerson. And today we have our very special guest. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Wayne W. Johnson, and um, this is not a wig. <laughs> <laughs> he, he said it used to be longer. Yes. It used to be all the way down to here, actually. Um, nice. Yeah, I, uh, back in the music days, <laughs> you know, um, had problems uh, sitting sometimes, and... Uh, <laughs> Sit-ups were a little bit of a problem, but... How long would it take you to wash that? Um, did you wash it? Yeah, yeah, that's a better question. <laughs> yes, I did. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, after, you know, after things started crawling out of there, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you should wash it. Um, not as often as you would think. I mean, um, I lose a lot of hair when I wash this thing. So, uh, you know, and so I was like afraid, you know, I'm going to be bald or, or worse, have it like a skullet or something, you know, like Hulk Hogan or something like that. And, um, he wears a bandana at yeah. all times. Well, yeah. yeah. You, you, you yeah. notice all those guys from the hair bands, you yeah, know, right? they, they started getting older all of a sudden. The, yeah, the yeah, bandana. The bandana. They, they all started doing that. It's like, hmm, let's right. see here. And you can actually buy wigs. Not that I've been researching, but you can actually buy wigs that have <laughs> With the that there. Yeah, so That's it kind great. of flows in and everything. So for those people who just don't have enough time in their lives to wrap that around their head, just pop it in pop and it go. Nice. That's it. Next show, we're doing it in skullet yes. wigs. Oh, we, yes. we are doing we totally it. Totally should. We should, we should. We should. We should check that out. <laughs> yes. yes, totally. So for people yes. that don't know who you are, uh, you are a, a an actor, obviously. Musician, we were just listening to some of your stuff on SoundCloud, which was which was amazing. We're gonna to listen to some of that on the post show. Absolutely. What are you working on? And then the connection to Casanova from yeah. last summer that was really cool. Yes. Well, um, I've been uh, seriously uh, involved with acting since 2011. And this is the problem with having long hair; it pops into <laughs> your mouth whenever you do stuff like this. And um, before that, I was uh, the vocalist and. Uh, guitar player for a melodic hard rock band called Caroline Blue, uh, which was based out of Syracuse, New York. Um, when that band started, it was around 2000, 2001, um, it was never, with that band there's never anything that comes along easy. You know, um, when I first started I couldn't really get anybody to join the band permanently, so it became me and people I hired. And then a couple years of that happened with various results. And then eventually I started getting permanent lineups, and we did that for a while. And uh, they came and went. A lot of great experiences, a few not-so-great experiences. It just happens that way. Um, I want to take this time to thank everybody who was ever, who ever did anything with the band, because every single one of you have helped move the band forward. And, of course, some of you helped move it back. But, you know, hey, <laughs> one step back, that, too that, forward. You know, it's, it's one life. of those things, you know. Um, <laughs> But it's all good, all good. Um, and then uh, by 2010, with the, the last lineup, um, things were progressing very well, but um, I was getting like really stressed out, burnt out, for various reasons, which we won't go here, because um, I'm saving it for a book called Wayne the Book. <laughs> nice. Available at a dollar store near you. Um, uh, those little cliches. Uh, but, um, so that's when I started uh, turning my direction towards acting. Now. Um, one uh, particular moment, I kind of talked with these guys a little bit beforehand because they were kind of grilling me to make sure that I'm um, <laughs> make PG-13. Sure PG <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who the hell is this guy? We've, <laughs> we've had worse on the show already. It's okay. Don't, don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. Um, I remember very specifically um, during one of our music video shoots, um, it, was, it was almost like everybody was like miserable and having a bad time for one reason or another. Um, but I was just having a ball because you put me in front of a camera um, not only am I having a great time, but I'm, I keep talking, so, you know, eventually these guys are going to be like, <laughs> right. just he did like, say, just cut them off and shut them yeah, up at yeah. some point, but no, this is fast. Just ask my girlfriend. She's always like, where's the off button? But, um, 
you know, um, but I was having a great time and it was just like, you know, um, when I was in high school, I, I like to shift subjects too. <laughs> I can go all over the place. Um, ironically enough, I actually had a point in my, uh, in my senior year where it was like either go towards music or go towards acting. And um, I chose music. And it's kind of ironic that now I'm fully with acting for the most part. And music is more off to the side in a sense. It's, it's still there. Um, but uh, I kind of put it on the shelf a little bit for a while. And it's starting to come back a little bit. And um, it's mainly me and it's kind of like the Nine Inch Nails uh, model, you know, where you had Trent. Mm -hmm. And then basically he hired people around mm -hmm. to do everything that he couldn't do. You know, so I'm not comparing myself to Trent. The guy's a genius. I'm not, you know, he's, he's got way more talent than I could even aspire to. But so all these people on YouTube, what? <laughs> you know, so. so you got into acting oh, by second. doing music videos, Pictures. Right? That's right. It's <laughs> good. It's good. So yeah, I'll try to look. I got so it. excited I <laughs> spilled the wine. There you go. So, oh, nice. I spilled my ginger ale. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> so you did. Uh, you were in some music videos. You were saying mm -hmm. that's how you kind of got into the segue from acting and well, from um, music to acting. One thing I'll, I'll say, um, whether it's music or whether it's acting uh, or really any creative field, a, a big part of it is connections and networking mm -hmm. and using. Uh, uh, my story, so to speak, um, when I was doing music videos, uh, specifically for like uh, the songs Pain, uh, Stay, Paid the Electric Bill Mix, Dead or Alive, I've Seen the Light Tonight, uh, the director for that was uh, Ron Bonk from SRS Cinema. And uh, he's also an indie filmmaker. So uh, it wasn't that hard to find out what he was doing in terms of acting and stuff. And actually I got a part as an extra in a movie called uh, Miss Cannibal Holocaust. Miss Cannibal Holocaust. Yeah, it's a it's nice. you take Cannibal Holocaust and you put a Miz there. That's uh, it's a totally different movie though. Just um, as an aside, the movie Cannibal Holocaust is one of the most disturbing films I've ever seen in my life. Have you really? Yeah, oh yeah. It's Why? from the seventies. What? Oh, it's terrifying. Really? It's, have you seen it? No, um, no. I will say that there are some people that would probably say Ron. He's very inspired in terms of really? those type of movies and stuff. Nice. He's, he's very cool with, with he's very cool with the horror movies and stuff. Huh. And I was just an extra in that movie, um, mm -hmm. and I got a taste of that. And then uh, from there, um, there was another guy as an extra. He was a local uh, indie filmmaker. His name is Brian Hewitt. And then I got a larger role in his movie called Rise Up and Fall. And it kind of just it kind of started building from there. And I just started. When I made the decision to really go after acting, and I actually had some money behind me on top of it, so that always helps. Yeah, mm -hmm. because Absolutely. when you're broke, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> um, it's amazing how the networking doors open where there's a little cash behind it. Well, usually the cash flies out. <laughs> 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 you know, it's like, oh, you open this door. Oh, there's your cash. <laughs> Where'd it go? Um, uh, you know, it's just that every door that opens here, there's a couple more doors open, and sometimes you don't see them. Mm -hmm. You know, there's opportunities everywhere. There's people that have written to me or talked with me, you know, on, um, you know, on sets and stuff. Where do you get all these acting gigs? Because mm -hmm. for a while I was very active. I mean, if you look on my yeah, you're, site, waynewjohnson.com, yeah, awesome. yeah. shameless plug, um, and under the acting tab, and there's a, it's, there's subdivisions, and it says chronology. If you look there, especially like 2012, 2013, there's quite a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. So people mm -hmm. ask me. You know how do you do this and it's like it's really in terms of networking um being as uh, professional as you can mm -hmm. being as good as you can mm -hmm. and keeping your eye out for those opportunities because they're everywhere right and it's just learning to recognize them because um, if they're if you know if there's one there and you don't see it then well so that's um i'm sorry ben, you... well i was impressed with just to kind of piggyback on that with with your networking and your branding and all the kind of stuff that you do i was looking at like all because that's what i love looking at is all the social media and making sure it ties back into the website making sure that the consistent information you have a very strong personal brand mm -hmm. well, and how much you. how much do you think about that stuff how much do you work on it do you do it all yourself is it all managing social media the website updating making consistent information pretty much all the social media is me wow um well, there were times like, um, you know, uh, ironically, this is my, uh, to divert a little bit, this is my, today, March 9th, is my two-year anniversary with my lovely girlfriend, Debbie. There you go. Oh, nice. Hello, Debbie. Congratulations. And uh, Cheers. Yep. 
Uh, I'm not getting drunk here. No, it's ginger ale. It's ginger ale. It's ginger ale. <laughs> With a kick. <laughs> By the way, all those people who say, have you never seen Wayne drink alcohol? Well. <laughs> See what happens when you're sitting in a distillery oh, and giving an interview? <laughs> Feel like my hair is growing more now. <laughs> <laughs> That's a new pro- new byproduct. There you go. <laughs> it's like, there you go. Hair growing. Um, anyway, what I was um, back to point. Yeah. <laughs> you see, I veer off a lot. No, it's good. Um, so your your strong personal brand. My brand. Well, uh, I uh, learned really early on um, that you know, while talent in and of itself is great to have, um, if you don't get out there and uh, get out there and you know basically make yourself known and networking and all that stuff you're just kind of you know and if you take it as a musician it's like you're just playing in your bedroom right all, you know and it's you can be a legend in your bedroom that didn't come out right <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna get a t-shirt made up of, yeah. uh, of that but uh, <clears throat> we're gonna add it to the series what's happening right? I like this stuff <laughs> <laughs> I feel warm already <laughs> So what's it like in Syracuse in the CNY being an actor? Right. Is that a good... Because I know um, Mad Angel Films, which you've done a number of movies with, are from Utica. Right. Are there other uh, movie production places around here? Do you have to branch farther out beyond Syracuse? You should always... uh, Well, you always keep in mind all the stuff that's going on in your home base. But yes, always branch out as well. Because um, eventually you kind of go through your home areas and, you know... you. You should definitely, again, if, if you want to network, you have to branch out. Yep. Because um, that's how everything spreads. It's like a virus in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, the Syracuse acting scene, um, you know, from what I've experienced, uh, it it's it's doing great, especially with theater. Theater is phenomenal with, uh, I mean, there's a lot of coverage going on with that. A lot of uh, fellow actors that I know are going through that. Um I haven't yet only because of the time factor that's involved. When it comes to theater, there's usually two to three or even more months of rehearsal. And it's like two or three nights a week. And, you know, it's that's great if you're uh, in school and you may have a part-time job or, you know, if you're unemployed or if you have the time to do that. Unfortunately, I don't have the time to invest in that. That's part of the reason why I go towards more acting than theater. I've done a little bit of theater, but... Um, not anywhere near, near as much as acting. Um, Syracuse, there's some great uh, producers out here. Um, there's a good um, acting program with Syracuse University. Mm-hmm. Actually, in, in about another week, I'm going to be doing, um, it's not Syracuse, it's Oswego. Uh, I'm going to be in a short film from, um, it's a short film slash student film called New Riots. See, I'm plugging. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. It's no. up in Oswego we'll next up. week. It's a, like a punk rock kind of a, you know, punk rock, yeah. <laughs> um, a love story, in a sense. And, um, you know, but the student, uh, the, the colleges, you know, where you got Syracuse, uh, Oswego, uh, out in Utica, out in uh, Rochester, mm-hmm. Buffalo. Um, I, I, from what I've seen from uh, going throughout the state, um, Buffalo and uh, Albany, are especially Buffalo. Buffalo has a real big scene out there. Mm. Albany does, too. Um, you know, and then there's all sorts of places elsewhere. Utica, there's there's a lot of people that are known, and then there's other people that aren't so known yet, mm-hmm. for one reason or another. Either they're just starting, or maybe they don't do as much uh, with their social media presence as of yet, because it is time consuming. Mm-hmm. Um, one nice thing about doing the social media stuff, though, is once you get everything set, um, it's just easier to maintain right. instead of uh, redoing and all. Uh, rebuilding all the time. It doesn't mean I'm on everything. I mean, for example, I'm not on Snapchat. Mm-hmm. Uh, want to talk real quick? Oh. Okay, now go. Okay, so we want to no. talk real quick about uh, Romeo 3000. Mm-hmm. That was filmed, part of it was filmed here in Kaz, and it is a, um, I'll let you explain it, but it's kind of a post-apocalyptic take on Romeo and Juliet, right? Yes, um, we filmed it at Hillcrest Estates. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful place. Beautiful people, I mean... I mean, it was just, it was a great experience filming there. Um, I wish I lived there. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, Us too. It's just a huge house. Um, right now, uh, the film is in post-production. Uh, it's being edited. Um, hopefully, uh, we would like to have it released by the end of the year, um, if not sooner. 
but it's it's quite a process because there's a lot involved. There's a lot of it. Um, there's a lot of films out there that there's a lot of it's like action, a few things, action, a few things, action, action. This one is it really emphasizes the acting a lot, and um, you know we do stray from the the uh, Shakespeare formula a little bit here. We took some liberties. Um, you know, the purists out there are going to be like, what the hell is this? <laughs> you know, but you know, especially with the outfits and stuff, because it is uh, post-apocalyptic. <laughs> How's that for proper pronunciation? <laughs> um, with some steampunk flavor thrown in, a little bit of cyberpunk flavor thrown in. And basically what we could do, given our budget, <laughs> you know, because there's only so much you can do unless you get more money. And while we did raise a lot during the, our, um, our Kickstarter, you know, obviously, money goes out real fast mm -hmm. when it comes like that. So hopefully, um, we're going to be starting promotion stuff in a trailer uh, before the end of the year, and the movie will be out before the end of the year. And um, one thing that's planned right now, whether this actually happens, you know, because plans change, um, there's uh, there's been talk of two different versions of the film wow. because of the size. Um, I've already seen a first edit of this, and it's already really big, really long. So. Um, there's talk of a, a DVD version and then a Blu-ray version. Obviously, the Blu-ray version is going to contain more. It's almost like a director's cut oh, nice. because there's just so much stuff to add in there. Um, the DVD version will probably be uh, the version that will be seen. Uh, Matt from Mad Angel Films, Matt Peters, he uh, usually has like a, you know, it's like a, a showing for cast, crew, and the general public in the Utica area. And what will probably be shown at that will be the DVD version. Uh, again, things can change. Um, this is based on the knowledge that I know currently about that. And then after that, when it goes to festivals, uh, DVD, Blu-ray, all that stuff, then that's where you start talking about the Blu-ray version and stuff. And uh, we'll see because there's there's quite a lot of stuff in, in this. Very cool. So, cool. So we'll link up Romeo Three Thousand. Is that the website? Uh, it's uh, on Facebook. On Facebook. You just shut it. <laughs> so oh it just turned God. off. The perfect interview. Right? So they'd, be like, <laughs> they'd be like, oh, that's perfect. <laughs> we call that the face for radio edit. <laughs> yeah.